We bought a house for $30,000. And uh, over the next month, I'm gonna uh, revitalize this whole place and hopefully turn it into a flip or an Airbnb or a rental. I haven't quite decided yet because this house has a well, which is incredibly valuable up here because uh, the Cal Water Service is expensive. But uh, it's an 86 mobile, which is really nice because you can get financing on these manufactured homes. And it has a room addition. Uh, I gotta check the permits on that, but that makes it a three, two. Three bedroom, two bath for 30,000 and a well. Pretty valuable, it just needs a lot of work. When I say a lot of work, I mean, basically the flooring in every room's coming up. I gotta tack the subfloor down in some areas where it got loose. There has been a bit of water damage from the inside, not from the roof. We do have a new roof, a torch down, uh, but I've got a crew of guys and we gotta go around the property. Obviously, first thing to do is uh, clean it up. So the way I do these typically is I start at the top, right? No point in plastering or painting inside if the roof leaks. So we start at the roof. If the roof's good and the coolers and furnaces on top are good, then we move to the ground floor so we can actually work. That means all the trash has to come out. We need a workable space. So all this stuff here is getting ripped out now. We're just throwing it right on the trailer. Uh, really, that's just day one, just getting all the crap out of the way. Then we go into the house, which we're going to do now. We go through the whole house, tear all the floors out that we got to replace, and we start taking a look at the subfloor and uh, see what work needs to be done there. Now, the cabinets need to be repainted, but the walls are my main concern. That's going to be a lot of the money on this job. I, I put out about uh, estimated about 4000 to redo the inside. So it has all this like almond walnut colored wood grain from the original 86 build, which is it's just normal and nice. Uh, manufactured homes, I think, are do this instead of classic drywall because when they're transported, right, they show up on trailers. Uh, yeah, on the road, on the highway, bumping, moving around, drywall will crack. So by the time they get to their final location, uh, there are just cracks everywhere, it's no good. But this wood paneling stuff, it's obviously breathing, it can move. Um, and then between each panel, you'll see this kind of like splint piece here. And that just kind of binds it in case there's any movement. Now houses do settle over time. Since this house has been here for over 20 years, I'm not worried about it moving. So now I'm comfortable with drywalling it, which means all these walls have ridges. Okay, just a tiny sixteenth of an inch ridge here, um, and there is some kind of a veneer on these. So I've seen in the past guys will just primer over it and paint it. I've done it, and it works fine. But since I'm doing the entire house and probably the ceiling, because there's this yellow striping that kind of matches the rest of the tone of the house, but not well, uh, I'm probably gonna primer and paint all that too. Primer's really good. You put primer on it and paint, it's usually gonna stick. But I do have a couple orbital sanders and a couple of willing hands, so. We may just sand everything down that's gonna get painted in here. So like I was saying, all the carpets, all these floors, this one isn't that bad, but it's in a weird location. Uh, so I think what I'm just gonna do is tear it all up, tear this room additions floor all up. This room's pretty rough. This is the only room with double pane windows, but they're all broken uh, to some extent. And they're a non-traditional size. So that's great, dog poop, wonderful. Yeah, this house smells like um, dog and smoke. So that's why we have to prime all the walls and do all new flooring. You just you can get the smell out sometimes, but it's just gross. I just don't like it. If we're gonna do it, let's do it right and uh, gut it. So this ha this room also has a drop ceiling because this is the roof. It's a good roof. It's an aluminum roof, but uh, the drop ceiling's missing. So I'm gonna basically get the inserts and rebuild this drop ceiling. It's already low. I'm six foot, and then. If you stand right here, you can tell this really only goes to about six foot six or so. Um, but this room's gonna be quite a bit of work and you can see it's kind of built onto the side of the mobile. So these manufactured homes, it's one unit, a, another unit, and then this is an addition onto that. So this was the original outside wall that was just built onto it. And it seems sturdy and it doesn't leak. Um, and the subfloor feels fantastic. So it just needs a lot of cosmetic work. Whoever lived here before, and I, I don't wanna talk too much about the previous tenant because the whole how I made this deal happen, um, does include some friends and really nice people, but um, instead of doing the furnace repair correctly, they kind of jimmy rigged it to bypass the thermostat so they can just manually turn it on by pushing that. And it works, just a matter of um, putting it all back together. Now, a little tool, uh, tip of the trade here, you know, a lot of people get overwhelmed about real estate projects and they try to bring in all these other people. We live in the time of the internet and you can find all this information out. Call the right people when you don't know what to do, make the right friends, and I know people that can work on furnaces. I have a guy at justask.com that I pay monthly for sometimes when I'm working on furnaces or ACs. I can call and be like, hey, I've got my voltmeter here. This is what the issue is. What do I need to do? And they can walk me through it. I've done that a few times. But um, I have a Delta Propane up in Lake Isabel. They're the best. They always take care of me. So they got a guy that can take a look at this once I get my tank switched over. So here's our kitchen. 
Uh, I don't know what happened. I think this guy might have uh, got into the Luxor theme, red and black. Kind of awful looking in my opinion, but to each their own. But for me, what that means is, is I'm gonna come in and literally prime and repaint this entire kitchen. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the backdrop, maybe this light slate color that I plan on doing on the outside, like a titanium white and slate two-tone outside. I might do that in the kitchen as well. Uh, I, us I usually just do like a bare Swiss coffee on all the houses on, on the inside. We've been doing that for 12 years. So all of our houses, whenever we have to repaint them, it's always the same color, which is really nice. Um, one of the tricks of the deal, and I'll mention this in another video, is when you have a squatter or a tenant that is refusing to leave and they plan on leaving, but it's like they have nowhere better to go, uh, they have drug problems, whatever it is, I try not to take anything uh, personal. Nothing's emotional, it's just business. So, uh, and I tell people that straight up, like, I, I know this is already hard for you, you're already having trouble finding a new place, you're getting kicked out of where you're at, I've been fair with you, I've been told you what the timeline is, um, and usually I'll try to get a, a, find a way to give them money. Uh, without like paying for the keys and in this case I was able to say hey do you want the washer dryer and fridge or do you want to sell those to me and they say oh I want to sell them I want to sell them they work yeah they work I don't care if they work or not I mean I do but like at the end of the deal I tell them okay I'll give you a hundred bucks a piece so uh, you know I'll, I'll offer them money for it and then I'll tell them on the day you leave and hand me the keys when granted I'm gonna change the locks anyway but, but hand me the keys like there's that 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 uh, recognition this is the end everything's out you hand me the keys then I'll give you the money so they don't start chasing you down for the money. I need the money moved. I don't know. It's not till you're out. Um, and so people will get creative ways to find a way to get out sooner. If they know there's an incentive to not destroy the property, right? When you buy a house as is, you never know if the, the tenant is going to destroy it on their last day in spite of you. So a lot of people get emotional. Oh, these people are this and that. They're drug heads. They're criminal. Don't. Don't. You don't know what these people's lives are like. You're not better than them. Just accept the deal for what it is. You're getting a great deal on it. Treat the people nice. You're always going to do better if you treat people nice and fair. So this is uh, bedroom number two, and uh, I'm sorry, I just ex I get excited about these things because uh, most people panic when you buy a house that needs this much work. But I've been doing it for so long, and I realize not a lot of people do this. And my wife can't be here to do this. We have a brand new baby and two other kids at home, so three babies at home, and she loves seeing house remodel. So a lot of this is for her. Hi, honey, I love you. Uh, but this house, this room is really not that bad, right? Floors coming out. The subfloor sunk in here. All right, so this is one of the major problems. We'll look at that later today. Um, all the windows are gonna stay. They're original, they work. They just need to be cleaned up and recased down on the outside. But this room's gonna all drywalled, saying that I'm gonna do whatever color palette I do in the kitchen, I'm gonna do on this. I hate doing this, because this does look nice. This one might clean up right. So some of these I might just leave as is. But uh, the closets aren't in bad shape. But uh, once again, all the carpets in here are all getting ripped out. This wall is kind of a mess. It's really hard to to get this paneling. So we're gonna pull this off, see what's behind it. Um, in a worst case scenario, sometimes you literally just have to put like a metal white cover on the wood. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. And sometimes that's just the best solution. Um, depending on whether I rent Airbnb or sell this house, uh, I may make further uh, upgrades. Like this bathroom is not terrible. It needs a new caulking job. You could tell someone who did it, they really tried to make it look nice. But um, all in all, I think it deserves just a little bit of attention here. Uh, we'll probably keep this original countertop. It's not damaged, it's not scratched, it's not broken anywhere. Just kind of ugly, but that's okay. Uh, it does match kind of the theme of the house. Not the ugly part, the, uh, the almond white color. So the mirror's probably coming off. We'll get a better looking mirror there because that matters to, to everyone. Uh, this needs to be, I'll probably need to run new electrical here just to make this a permanent addition for that vanity light. Uh, having a uh, wire there just looks kind of ghetto. Uh, the shower is rough. Um, there's not much you can do on a shower unless you want to completely pull all the walls off and retile it, which I'm not opposed to doing, but I don't tend to typically do it on mobiles because that's adding a lot of weight. And um, just the added value isn't always there. So if the, the integrity of the shower is good, and you can kind of see here that it's all pretty sound. It just needs caulking, maybe paint. So maybe I'll come in here and just caulk this, seal it all up, uh, get rid of all the old caulk, recaulk it, and then uh, paint it up and seal it. Now this right here is ugly. We're gonna have to dig into this and see what needs to be done there. But ultimately, uh, if we pull all that off and, and get behind it there, we can uh, make a decision. But the tub is nice. There's no major scratches or damage on the tub. Now the floor here is kind of wobbly. Um, you can see the movement there. So that's gotta come up, but not, not a major problem. Once again, this room, uh, is a different 
paint, right? So it's not the same wood and texture as the other part of the house. So I'll probably just paint that. I don't think I'll texture it. But the rest of the house, we're gonna drywall all those cracks, texture it, and then paint it. This room is the master. We're missing the sliding doors here. Uh, Jared, have you seen the sliding doors for these? No, all right. We're gonna be on the lookout for those. We can always get generic ones, but uh, better to have the originals, even if they're outdated. Uh, another closet here is nice. Here's a uh, fog mirror in the bedroom. And these, there's three windows like this in this house. I don't know how this fire damage happened. Maybe a candle was there or something. But small little uh, makeup counter there. And then here's the master bathroom. A little bit bigger, but it's one sink. And this is pretty common. I, I know this style of, of house. I've got a few of these. I've done these before. Um, it's identical to another one I got. So I've done this before. And uh, I think this bathroom, once again, the subfloor is a little bit messy from leaks over the years but the shower is good. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's the whole house. Now there is a shed out back and there are some gates, but it's a pretty small piece of property. Uh, the well is on the neighbor's yard, so I don't have to maintain it. He just sends me a bill every month. We just split it 50-50 because we're half owners. And that is on the title of the house, as well as uh, this addition. Sometimes you buy a mobile and it's never been secured to the title, which means you can get a great deal on it, but it's hard to sell it because, uh, can I help you? We have a visitor. Sometimes if you buy a house that had uh, drug dealers frequenting it or drug users frequenting it, the uh, local druggies will come by and um, try to score a deal thinking they might still be here. Uh, in this case, I just had a guest that was looking for the previous tenant's friend. I don't want to accuse anyone of anything. That's just a generic statement that happens sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm not rich. So when I buy a house like this and I get them real cheap and dirty like this, uh, that kind of comes with a certain type of people. I'd like to get to the point where I'm in full commercial real estate and million dollar properties, but uh, I'm just not there yet. So for now, this is how we're doing it. Um, I guess I'll just start giving updates as we go along and we start loading this trailer up and getting all the shit out of here. Once all the floors are out, once all the trash is out, once the property's cleared, then we really get to come in and start doing some construction and having a lot of fun. You see how quick we do this stuff because uh, I don't know. That's uh, that's the spiel. I don't know. It's the first time doing this. So I hope you guys are uh, excited for this. And um, if you guys know my channel, I don't normally put my construction stuff on there. But uh, when I quit Arca War a year and a half ago, uh, this is kind of what I started doing full time. I'm up here all the time, every day. Wild shit. Wild shit. Every day. Uh, from the laundromat businesses to the rental houses to the real estate deals. This whole real estate deal is kind of wild too. How I did the financing and the 1031 exchange on another house I'm selling that's an Airbnb to turn it into two houses. Uh, if you guys are into that, subscribe to the channel because I'm happy to give away all this information for free. I think everyone should be doing it. I don't think anyone should say to look at real estate as something like, I don't know anything about it. I got to get a hustler mentality. That whole hustler mentality. Everyone's trying to sell you something. Everyone's trying to say they've got a system or a program. Everyone says there's a mindset. It's like, no, listen, you guys know me. I'm a big picture guy. I look at every, I got in banking 15 years ago. So I know how loans and money works. I know how real estate works. My family's in real estate. Uh, so for me, I, I've got all the pictures of the puzzle figured out. Now I just got to put it all together, come up with a number, a time frame, and a budget, and then it's doing the work. And uh, that's honestly not the hardest part. The hardest part's finding the deal. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to find deals. And I'll, I'll go into the depths of, the struggles I've had with that in future videos. If you're interested in that, I might do that sooner than later. Put it in the comments below. That helps the algorithm. But uh, all right, enough talky talky. Let's uh, let's start demoing this house. Well, we're coming to the end of uh, the cleanup stage. We've got all the satellite cabling, all the coax and ethernet pulled off the ceiling. Actually, I just realized there's some up there. Uh, I got a little bit more here to do, but the roof is pretty good looking. Uh, we didn't find a single leak in the house except on the back corner, which doesn't look like it's coming from the roof looks like it might just be coming in the side right where this electrical panel is and this is kind of one of those things with mobiles they don't have flat walls all the time so right here it's raining and water's trickling in and it's got to be getting in there somewhere i'm guessing right here that's where it's coming in so simple enough i'll just take some silicone exterior latex caulk maybe a latex with silicone in it and fill it all up and then it's just a matter of uh, going under the house, checking all the insulated ducting for the furnace to make sure that none of those have been ripped out. Otherwise, your furnace just blows hot air under the house, and that's no good. But um, we'll get under there with duct tape and more insulated ducting. I've got plenty in my yard if we need it. And then at that point, we just uh, finish screwing in all the side skirts, 
making it as straight as possible you know you kind of just do your best because over the years the house will settle and people kick them in and the satellite company guys they like to tear them apart to hide their wires but uh <clears throat> god i hate those guys sorry if you're one of those guys but jesus you guys destroy houses here's what we're looking at everything's basically pulled out and we're working our way around we got to get the ac out of the wall and all this floor and carpet is coming up that's the next job so i'm filming before the destruction and we got to pull the washer dryer and fridge out still that won't take long we know how to do that and uh here's what our subfloor looks like so not too bad um man i thought this would be one inch but it looks like three quarter but that's fine you can see they painted it just to, to seal it which is good i made sure that if you know get pets and they're peeing and crapping on the carpet it doesn't get into the wood doesn't permeate into it um <clears throat> but yeah so this is what it looks like and that's that's really nice um floor material man i'm surprised i hate throwing it away because it looks like it's new but the carpets were wrecked so we could have recarpeted it but really not a big fan of carpet especially if this becomes a rental or an airbnb um, and because this is in a dirt road this whole property and I haven't redone I'm gonna pour a slab there for the walkway but either way no matter where you park on this property you're gonna be stepping in dirt and mud and as soon as you walk into the house through here uh, you're gonna get it on the carpet it's just gonna ruin the carpet so screw it we'll just pull it all out put LVP in and uh, I don't always do my own floors if it's a big enough job I'll just hire a flooring guy I got a couple guys All right, so one of our little side projects here is gonna be this funky wall on this room addition. What they had was, is an exterior light that was hooked up uh, to literally some kind of 18 gauge wire that was punched into this hole on the outside of the house here. And if you come inside, remember this is a room addition, uh, I'm guessing it wasn't done by permit. But technically, you know, this could have been done after, but they basically punched a hole through the wall here, ran the wire down, and they had it plugged into this outlet. So we're gonna have to do that the right way, which means we're gonna pull this panel off and just run some 14 gauge wire up, just run it up to here and put in a proper outside light on a switch. We'll just punch a hole in the other wall and uh, that'll give us exterior light on this side of the building. All right, so here's the back side of that wall exposed. It came off real easy, just to probably 30 screws or something. But uh, you can see here's all the insulation. So there's our uh, outlet box in the bottom. So we'll just tap into this, grab the power that's feeding this, take the neutral all the way up to probably there and pull it over. Maybe I'll put the new light just like right here, maybe even higher up and then uh, just break the hot at a switch probably right here. I mean, that's the way to do it because if you see on the other side of this wall that's about a 24 inch there that's about a forearm so our new switch is going to be something like right here which is kind of an odd place so it's just a matter of do i want to pull that panel off and put it closer behind the door and i don't think i do because there's no point in having it here when the door opens to the left so yeah we're just going to put it right here out of the outside light easy enough so here's an update on the lighting situation. We got the new switch in, uh, connected to that outlet down there. And I <clears throat> went ahead and ran the outside uh, junction box here. And now we just gotta cut that hole out of the exterior panel. But I just ran the 14 gauge right up through there, around the back and up. 